At a time like this, we need voices like these. On this episode of At Home with Authors. What gives you hope? We ask a question that requires a pause. We began asking what gives you hope in April during the peak of the first phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. How do you keep your sanity in a way that you feel productive and contributing at this moment in time when we can't get together in person? You know, one of the things about books, as it is about any great works of imagination and ideas, is their universality. Through books, I do two things. One, I connect to the world that is being taken away from me. I mean, I open a book and um, all these voices and all these people come alive and they talk to me. And, and I talk back to them. So it, it, it is an amazingly uh, gratifying feeling that these people um, are still alive and, 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 and I can connect to the world through them. Um, so in this way, the world comes to my home and uh, doesn't let me be alone. Our conversations about hope have evolved as nationwide demonstrations over systemic racism have picked up momentum. Given what we are facing now, Nathaniel Philbrick, what gives you hope? What, what gives me hope um, is, is, in a way, this nation's history. Um, we have a history of uh, crisis and somehow finding a way through it. Um, whether it was the revolution, whether it was the War of 1812, uh, the Civil War. There's a reckoning that accompanies these these terrifying um, incidents in our history that causes people to to look deep into themselves and and attempt to address them. But I think if we have, um, you know, in our our foundational documents, the aspiration uh, that you know, all people are created equal, there will always be hope as long as we um, uh, keep those ideals before us. I mean, that is the responsibility of every generation. And the older I get, the more I realize it's the, the younger generation that is, is, is going to, is driving it forward. It's, it's to live up to that challenge. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's the greatest challenge, uh, particularly a society like our, you know, a multicultural society like ours has, but it's, it's the meaning of to be an American is to try to make sure that ideal is fulfilled as best it can be in our own time on earth. I think it's really easy to, to come off, you know, with a sort of pomposity and say like, you know, back in our day, when we did X, Y, and Z, things were so much better. I, resist that actually because what i see around me and what i understand is that the actual capacity for young people now to actually face things to look at the planet and what's happening to the planet and be able to pinpoint and describe it and say here are the things that have to happen to look at what's happening in, with gun violence, for instance, and say, this is going too far. Here's what we have to do. I have enormous faith and enormous hope that, that, that they are our solution and that they'll think of ideas and ways to actually use and manage technology to actually push us forward in the future. I think the country has a lot of work to do. I'm worried about how quickly that work is going to be done. What gives me hope though, Michael, is the young people of all races who are out there protesting. What would you say to them to both give them hope and encouragement in a realistic way that might shape their actions uh, in, in the most productive way possible. I think 
what I would say to them is keep up the peaceful protests. Continue to make your voices heard. It is the anger that motivates them, motivates us all. But the fact that you have some elements within those protest groups who are taking advantage of the moment to wreak destruction takes away from the fundamental message of the need for understanding in this country of what the background of black history has been. What, what gives me hope is there are so many people for such an extended period of time now, particularly young white people, who are addressing the known secateur, formerly known as white supremacy. It's hundreds of years, 400 years later, this is just absolutely amazing. It's a, it's a shame that it took the, the death of another black man for it to all occur, for it to occur. Um, but it's, a, it's astounding. I've never seen anything like this. Um, and I was one of those people back in the 60s. The answer is in the word systemic, which is now in the mainstream. But systemic is now not just something, you know, I think about as a black guy or groups of people think about as black people. Now it's millions of youngsters who get that and understand that and hopefully will make, you know, different decisions as they go forward. We're struggling now, but there are these ideals, you know, this ideals of, the, the, of, of transparency, of the rule of law, of equal justice under law, of, of democracy. And this current time is a, a, an amazing um, civics lesson, you know, for the country. I guess I just, I want that I want to see our, our better, better angels. Um, I've definitely seen our, our darker angels. Um, and I think we can get through this. And, and if you go back to even post 9-11, you know, things go wrong, there's excesses. We have reformed as a country. We fight like hell, it takes too long. Um, not everything's made right, but I, I just, uh, I want them to fight uh, for those ideals. And so if everything is terrible and dark, um, there's nothing to fight for. You know, I do think that having gone through a concentrated period like this, that, you know, wouldn't be at all surprising if we saw a shift back towards solidarity and away from that kind of cynicism and toward a sense that, you know, leaders, whether of governments or of corporations, you know, that they have a responsibility to their constituents or to their workforce. I think that, uh, sort of trampling of dignity or that not seeing individuals behind statistics, you know, I think that could cause, uh, you know, a, a, a real, a real turn in a, in a very, very different direction where norms, you start to really appreciate what it means to have guidelines around human behavior, to have ethics rules that are strictly enforced um, and to get out and vote and to take more agency again, back where we started in, in citizenship and not kind of leaving it uh, to leaders who make big promises and then just look out for themselves. Whether we're ever able to solve the problem of injustice, of, of, of inequality, uh, you know, I, dis I despair over that because, you know, we, we just haven't been very good at that in the 250 years that we've been around. This is unbelievable. Uh, I, asked you, I asked you what gives you hope, and you're talking about despair. Yeah, well, they're, they're, the, they're the flip side of the same coin. Can't have one without the other. But I still want to push you one last time. So what gives you hope? What gives me hope is, is a beautiful day like today, nature, uh, being out in nature, uh, acts of kindness and generosity uh, give me hope. Whether it will address income inequality i am not i have my doubts uh but uh no i don't have a lot of hope for our country at this moment no
it feels like it has a potential to actually instigate some change because uh, it, 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 I think with the with the the health crisis that we're experiencing, it feels almost like end of times desperation in what's happening, and so um, we needed Dr. Martin Luther King and we needed Malcolm X. You know, we needed militancy and we also needed passivity. Uh, to create a, a kind of change, and so I don't, I don't think you can have one without the other. You want change, but the only real change is radical change, right? So if we have radical change, what does that mean for people in power? There are things you can do in the music industry. There are things you can do in the publishing industry. You know, while we're publishing books, the publishing industry is still, still, eighty nine, ninety percent white, right? So, what are they gonna do? <laughs> you know, I think hip hop and R&B is like now the biggest selling segment of music. But if you go look at the top, top executives of music companies, they're not black. Right. So like, how do you remain hopeful when you know at the end of all of this in my lifetime? This is what we have, you know, who is going to be the one that says, I'm going to give up some of this. I'm going to cut this pie up. Uh, and it's going to mean a lot less for the people who got pie. Um, and I think. Because no one riots when they got pie, right? Like, who would be out there in the streets? Who would be getting murdered if they had pie? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know how we how we how we divide up the pie more evenly. But I do know that to me, this is a lot of is race. But the race is is you cannot disconnect it from from class. So is there anything here that? that gives you hope in this moment? Um, when I was growing up, uh, I didn't have this information. No one was, I wasn't reading. Um, I didn't know what was happening in the world. So what gives me hope is that there are kids who are growing up just like me and who have access to this information. Who My daughter just wrote me a post, wrote a post on her Instagram that was more politically astute than I, I could imagine being at, you know, 18 years old. My son has been writing protest poems. Um, so to me, that's hope because I didn't do any of that. And so, I mean, the best that I can do is, is give them an example. And then also, I didn't have a voice, you know, like there were plenty of things happening in my life that I wanted, well, I felt uh, I didn't want to share them, but but if I had an ability to kind of talk through them, that maybe things would have went a little different. So I think I feel fortunate that I have, you know, I got a bookshelf. How about that? I never had a bookshelf in my house in my life. And as an adult, I have a bookshelf. So if you want to talk about progress, there it is.